Chapter 2. The Cure Hank McCoy was in his office in Washington, D.C. He was hanging upside down and reading a science magazine. Hank McCoy was a top politician in the United States government. He was also a mutant. A mutant covered in thick blue hair so he looked like a big animal. Once, he had been one of Charles Xavier's X-Men. His name back then was Beast, and the name still suited him. The meeting's begun, sir, said a government assistant. Thank you, McCoy replied, and jumped quickly to the floor. Minutes later, he entered the meeting room where the president and several members of his team were sitting around a large table. Hank sat down in the empty seat next to the president. Our people were following Magneto's movements, the president said. Politician Bolivar Trask gave more information. He was seen in Lisbon, Geneva, Montreal. We lost him when he crossed into the USA. But we did catch somebody else. He pointed to a screen which showed a small prison cell. The prisoner had blue skin and yellow eyes. It was the mutant Mystique. We caught her breaking into the FDA, explained Trask. The politicians watched a screen as a government officer sat down opposite Mystique in the cell. Raven, he began. Mystique's yellow eyes burned with hate. I don't answer to my human name. It's the name that your family gave you, said the officer. Don't you care about your family? My family tried to kill me, said Mystique angrily. So now he's your family. The man was talking about Magneto. Where is he? I don't know who you're talking about, she replied. Then suddenly she changed so that she looked exactly like the officer. It was like looking into a mirror. Then she moved closer and whispered, I'll tell you where he is. The man moved closer, ready to hear more. Pow! Mystique jumped up and hit him in the face with her head. Immediately, guards ran into the room. The president, Trask and McCoy, watched the screen as the guards pulled Mystique off. Putting Mystique in prison will of course make Magneto even more angry and dangerous, said McCoy. But it does give us more power when we talk to his people. The president looked surprised. You expect me to talk to these people? Isn't that why you asked me to this meeting? asked McCoy. The president shook his head and passed a report to the mutant. This is, this is what Mystique stole from the FDA. McCoy started to look at the report. Immediately, he saw the photo of a young boy about 12 years old with big blue eyes and a shaved head. Below the photo, he read the name Leech and the words Cure for Mutants. He looked up slowly with fear in his eyes. Does this cure work? We think so, answered the president. This will change everything for mutants everywhere. Yes, agreed the president. That's why we need you, Hank. Power can be a very dangerous thing, Professor Xavier was telling the class of teenage mutants. We must all learn this lesson because we are mutants. When is it okay to use our powers? When do they give us too much control over others? The line between the two is sometimes impossible to see. Then how do we know when we've crossed it? asked Kitty Pride. How do we decide what is right and what is wrong? Xavier began. Then he stopped, suddenly silent. Outside, the sky was dark with storm clouds. We'll continue this lesson tomorrow, he told the class. The weather report said sunny skies, 
said Xavier. He had come to the front of the school, where Storm was standing. She was the reason for the dark clouds above. Oh, I'm sorry, she said. Her eyes turned white as she used her power over the weather. Moments later, the bright, sunny day was back. I don't need to read minds to see that something is wrong, continued Xavier as they went together into the school. Magneto isn't a problem for us now, said Storm. We have a mutant politician in the government. We have a president who understands us. Why are we still hiding? We are not hiding, Xavier replied. We still have enemies out there, and I have to protect my students. Storm watched the students going to their next class. Yes, but we can't be students forever. Storm, I haven't thought of you as my student for many years. In fact, he stopped at the door to his office. I have started to think that you might take my place one day. A look of surprise appeared on Storm's face. But Scott... Scott's a changed man, said Xavier. Jean's death has been so hard for him. Storm didn't know what to say. Things are better for us out there, continued Xavier. But you, of all people, should know how fast the weather can change. There's something you're not telling us, Storm said. She could see it in his eyes. When they went into Xavier's office, they found an old friend waiting there, Hank McCoy. Storm ran to Beast and hugged him. I have some news, said McCoy. Mystique was caught last week. We don't have... Who's the big ball of hair? asked a voice suddenly from the door. It was Logan. I'm Hank McCoy. Right. Nice suit, Logan replied as he entered the room. Storm was still thinking about Mystique. Magneto isn't going to be happy about this, she said. Magneto isn't our biggest problem, said McCoy. A company has made a new medicine for mutants. They're calling it a cure. These words hung for a moment in the air, and then... That's crazy, cried Storm. You can't cure being a mutant. Storm, said Xavier, pointing to a TV screen. They're announcing it right now.